Dr. Huron. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, we thank you for, again, technology for, and uh, that we're able to communicate uh, despite uh, both towns, Corning and, and Willows, um, getting all kinds of illnesses going through town. Um, but uh, again, we think we're able to communicate and, and uh, we do pray that all the people who are sick uh, do get well and don't have to go to the hospital and, and, uh, and hopefully we can go about our, our lives as, as, uh, as we hope to and, uh, and using our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So, um, so I, I was on a new topic, the Lord's Prayer. I was looking at our, the classes that are upcoming, and I think there were supposed to be 30 classes, but I'm not counting 30 left, and we're at 17. So what, what I am noticing is we got three classes on the Lord's Prayer, and then uh, we talk, have like five classes afterwards, and, and three of them are... Uh, more about the, the sacraments, such as uh, baptism, communion, and, and confession. So, and those are done during Holy Week, so they're, they're shorter classes. So um, I noticed there's a, a lot of, I guess, head knowledge in this section as well. But truth be told, even if we didn't have this class, I'm pretty sure you all could probably figure out what the Lord's Prayer is and, and what it means and, and what it, um, what, how that all helps us. So um, what I'm hoping or I'm trying to get at is that, uh, well, it is good to know what Christianity is. It, it's also, I'm hoping to have more discussion on how it's applying to our hearts and, and, and to our lives uh, today as um that's pretty hard to get into in a like a 30 minute discussion um, that's coming up here especially if you have some head knowledge to go over so um and i thought prayer of course is a is a great example because there's a whole lot that goes on in prayer but also um i guess another thing to look at, think about is um I guess there's three classes on prayer, but there's also two empty weeks. Um, one of them is I'm going to be gone because my wife will have her, <laughs> you know, she, she'll be uh, giving birth or having the, the scheduled C-section um, in February. So we'll meet next week and then the following week we're off. Um, and, then, um, and then we'll come because, because of the, the birth and then um, and then I'll be back. And then after that, I believe it's spring break for school. So last week of February, does that sound about right? Not quite there yet. Um, we have a break the 14th through the, we have a February break mm -hmm. and then we have a break at okay. Easter. But we're on- so you, might be, you might be a week earlier. Yeah, which is, which that is good to know. I'll have to check that out. Um, yeah. So, um, so if you're gone that week, that's fine. Because what week is uh, the C-section? Uh, the C-section is planned on the eighth, and so that'd be the ninth. Okay, the ninth. Yeah, and so the following week, nine plus seven, that'd be thirteenth. Uh, Sixteen. Is that right? Sixteen. 16th yes. yeah that's the week the we're on vacation yeah that's the week you're on vacation and yes I remember right the, the Windsor classes are have the following week off so um, um we'll, we'll just we'll just stick to to uh, what I had planned and um so what I'm trying to get at is we all not even though we have three weeks of classes for the Lord's Prayer we have five weeks to think about what we've learned roughly or even do things and so what what i put on here is uh i don't know if you heard of the group or the church hillsong they're actually based out of australia 
And uh, uh, what, what they've done is uh, the church actually ends up having their own band, uh, praise band, and uh, and the, the people have so favored their music. They, they've made albums, and it's um, not only been popular in Australia, but it's also been a popular in America and, and Europe as well. So, um, and so they've also do documentary type movies. Um, so what I'm hoping is everyone can have a chance to uh, watch the movie sometime within the next month. I don't know when you would have an hour the movie is an hour and 45 minutes, but I realized after I just watched it again on Sunday that after the first hour, you really get pretty much everything I'm looking for <laughs> in, in, in this movie for, for you guys to, to review. Uh, um, so there's a whole bunch of aspects, but let's. I wanted to go ahead and play a trailer here if I could. It's really depends on how well this uh can you stream the movie or how do you watch it uh that that's a good question so um uh, you can watch it uh through stream uh pure Flix, i guess if you already have a subscription to them i don't know if you've heard of them before uh their their movies uh most of the time, um, movies that uh, they've created themselves, and, and uh, a lot of them have, if not all of them, have a Christian theme um, attached to it. So, um, um, and so you can watch it through that, or um, it's just about on any streaming device. Okay. So. Um, it is a four dollar charge, and so um, I think because I can't really pay it for you, you know, no. if four dollars is a hardship for you, you know, I'll I'll figure out a way to reimburse you, but um, but it, you know, if you ask me, it's only four dollars. So, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> if but uh, if when you once you makes the purchase as a rental, um, you can. Uh, then I guess you have a month to watch it. And then once you press play, then you got 48 hours to finish it. So, um, and so, uh, and I watched it through Google play because that works for me. I think it's also on Apple TV. I'll send out a link, a text link Step for you down. to, uh, so, you, you know, you make sure you got the right movie and, and uh, I think you could probably even purchase it through YouTube. Um, I'm not seeing the details here, but uh, Stephanie found it on Amazon Prime Video. Oh, good. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime Video. So if, if that works for you, that's best. Yes. Okay. So yeah. So even I think does that work? If you already have a subscription, then you watch it for free. Is that how it? It's still three ninety nine. It's still three ninety nine. <laughs> it's still four dollars. But yeah, that's another way you, you can watch it. And so, um, again, I was hoping to do a concert, but especially with all the sickness going around. Um, and truth be told, this group uh, is the group that's actually playing in San Francisco at the end of March. And so you, you really get a good feel for what you would experience if you were to go. Um, but I think just watching this one hour video will just be a nice compromise for it. Um, this kind of experience you're looking for. So when do you guys, before I play the video, um, when do you guys think you would, might be able to watch it? All right, when's the next discussion you think you'd wanna talk about this? Thinking next week or three weeks from now? Well, I guess we probably all won't be here three weeks from now, unless, <laughs> um, unless uh, Casey shows up on his spring break. <laughs> no, we can show up on spring break. It's fine. I okay. <laughs> so, do we want to aim for three weeks then? Yeah. So 
So that's the 16th or something. What is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the 16th. Okay. So I'll go ahead and play the. I'll probably put a link to you. Click in here at home. So and then just exist is not that it's ultimately about God. You take him out of the equation. Got nothing. Well, I walked in hell, so I knew my life was different. I felt this hard shell around my heart just begin to crack open. that God created music to connect people, the human heart, our soul, with heaven. The challenge is on to write a new record. That is, got a song. Jesus. All right, so we got that Jesus with it. These songs are written for people to see, not just to listen to. <laughs> I believe there's life after death for eternity. And so I want people to come to that journey with us. Music has always been something that connects me to God straight away. And I realized, God, who am I? Just to leave these people. I'm just a country girl. <laughs> I guess this would be 11 albums. We're the biggest band you've never heard of. <laughs> but you actually need time to listen, time to breathe, time to clear out all the noise. I really want to hear from heaven. Absolutely not, but I think more stuff doesn't make sense without him. All right. So, um, you get the, you got to get a sense of, of what the movie's about. Um, well, it's still going, of course, <laughs> even after I press disconnect. Let's see if I can connect slides. Go back. Done. Am I on? Yeah. There's loading. I don't know what it's loading. <laughs> well, while it's loading something. Um, <laughs> no. see so yeah while it's loading something um i guess any, any thoughts or questions on that one I think I pretty much explained it all. Um, just uh, take note of the things you find fascinating or interesting, uh, especially comparing it to you, you both. Ali's been to one Corning or Willow service, of course. <laughs> so um, just compare the differences. And this is one. So what I'm hoping to get out of this is you also experience what another church might worship like, even though this a, it's a group and a concert. Um, I'm, I'd imagine their church worship is, is very much similar. Um, uh, the amount of people they're connecting to and the way they're connecting to others. Um, uh, and, uh, and if possible, um, I didn't really touch too much on this, but see how that what they're doing is transforming the lives of others. So, um, I'll be taking note. Uh, speaking of community, um, 
One thing I do hope is you get to know other Christians in your community really well. Um, and especially when I, I, we have two days that uh, we're not meeting next month, I, I was hoping uh, maybe y'all could connect with possibly another church. Um, not trying to get rid of you, <laughs> but nor, nor am I wanting you to stay isolated in your Christian faith and, and the people your own age bracket of um in, in your christian walk and so uh i contacted the the harvest christian center in, in corning and they said because everyone's getting sick they're not meeting again until sunday nights in february 20th so um and i'm assuming that's if things continue to get better <laughs> so um what kind of touch base you know, with that and see how that goes. Um, uh, for Willows, I, I talked to uh, uh, Open Gate and uh, I guess they meet Wednesday nights pretty much at the same time we do uh, between 6.30 and 8. So um, that's why those two weeks when we're not meeting would be great. So um, and the hope is that you visit at least once you don't have to continue to go on after that, um, but just to be able to experience getting together with, with other Christians, mm -hmm. um, again, within your own age, and, and see what they're teaching and, and how they're having everyone engage in the teaching and, and taken away from it, and, and hopefully there's a good community of friends over there. Um, I haven't been there myself, but at both churches, I've talked to the people who, who lead there, and and um, I'm fairly familiar with their theology that um, harvest not so much, but every time I talk with Pastor James there, I'm just, I want to take them and steal them and, and use them for our ministry. But <laughs> <laughs> of course, that's not going to happen. And, uh, and again, with Open Gate, I hear lots of good things. There's so many helpers at that one um, that... Uh, it's not so much of one person leading it. So, um, uh, and I'm, what I'm also hoping after all this is you guys are adults after this is, is the idea. Once you have confirmation that you take responsibility for your own faith. And so what I'm hoping to do is offer this as an outlet for you to connect with others uh, and hopefully even, um, and if you, if it did work out where you guys, they didn't end up finding it as a, as a good youth group to go to. Um, that would that would be okay with me, just knowing that, I mean, we could try to do it at both churches, but unless you guys have 20 friends that you're, you're ready to bring over, <laughs> um, <laughs> which I just, you know, I, you know, my prayer, my sermon for Sunday is to be hopeful and, and optimistic and love, but <laughs> um especially with COVID and everything <laughs> and just the nature <laughs> of everyone's at right now in their terms of um, reaction to, to, to church and, and, and wanting to make that Christian faith public um, or try new things in, in Christianity. I'm just, that's probably, I know more of a, a prayer than a, than a reality to, to have a youth group overnight, but who knows, you know, I don't know what the future is and, no, 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 uh, no reason why we can't pray big. So yes. here, let's see. I might, oh, let's see. Now that, now that things have probably settled down a little bit here. So that speaking of prayer, that brings us to the Lord's prayer. And if, if you have, or haven't looked at it, um, it begins with an introduction, which I'm okay with. We don't even get to the Lord's Prayer itself today. Uh, let's just talk about prayer. And so uh, a couple things. Um, I do plan to end in prayer, of course. But I'm hoping instead of me giving all the ideas for prayer, I'm hoping you guys can help out with some ideas. And so if you have any things that you're like, we should definitely pray for this at the end of the uh, lesson today. Go ahead and let me know and I'll write them down. Uh, but uh, the other thing is, 
What is this? I don't know. I'll, I'll, if I remember, I'll, I'll let you know. So you're not in trouble if you don't, if, <laughs> that I didn't tell you. We'll figure it out eventually. Um, so what is prayer? If you can see it. There you it's going to do this for all of them <laughs> if I don't move it. So what is prayer? Sean? Prayer is speaking to God in words of Yeah, prayer is speaking to God. I couldn't quite hear the last few words, but I'm sure that's. Any other ideas <laughs> or thoughts? It's a chance to ask God for a little bit of help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask God for help. For advice. See, I figured you guys kind of knew this pretty well already. <laughs> what else? Also, a chance to give thanks to God for you know some of the things that He has given us. Thanks to God. Mm -hmm. So that's actually our question on page uh, 2231. Uh, also question 231. It gets a little confusing because <laughs> the question numbers are almost the same as the page numbers. So um, Let's let's have a, a Casey. Go ahead and just read those those two lines there. The questions. Yeah, the question, and and, and then the the one sentence answer at the bottom of the page. What is prayer? Prayer is speaking to God in words and thoughts. All right. So that's just what Sean said. Um, <laughs> it does have a nice verse on the next page, Psalm nineteen fourteen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Um, which brings us to our, to our next question. We'll see how fast we get through this. <laughs> um, Alexis, I'll go ahead and read the next question. Um, how does God initiate prayer? God first comes and speaks to us through his word, thus inviting us to respond in his in prayer. In his word, God, A, commands us to approach him in prayer to show how earnestly he wants to help us. Yeah, definitely. So, um, I'm, I'm realizing I might need to change some subscription options here. Oh. So let's see. Okay, no. Let's see. So some some meetings we're all on here and, and some meetings we aren't. <laughs> so
Okay, well, I think I've, I've, I've finished. So, yeah. So we should be okay now. <laughs> so, um, so that's that's an interesting how he it does say a he, he approaches us, um, and I like that how it says earnestly. When it says earnestly, what does that mean? I think that's why I'm asking. <laughs> So earnestly means uh, another word might be genuinely, but I don't know if you know that one. He truly, he truly wants to help you um, uh, as opposed to uh, some God being just way up there and, and not really caring about his creatures. Uh, he does want a, a relationship with us. And I wonder if you could remember back to Adam and Eve. Um, if you can remember just God's relationship with with Adam and Eve so what happened after they ate the forbidden fruit uh, who, who was the first person to engage in conversation um, between Adam and Eve and God do you remember the snake no so the snake was, was talking to to, uh, to Eve and then Eve, Eve ate the forbidden fruit um, and then God God did something. <laughs> I think uh, I should have said. Then what happened? God <clears throat> and so, if, if you remember in Genesis three, uh, God, I came and actually ended up searching for Adam and Eve, and, and they were ended up hiding because Adam also ate the forbidden fruit, and so they were both in trouble. And uh, and the, the way the conversations were set up between Adam and Eve and God, you, you get the impression God gives Adam and Eve a chance to bail out of their uh, bail out of their uh, the, the trouble that they've had. You know, just to come forward. You know, not not be in hiding and say, look what. Why are you hiding? What happened? And uh, and of course, then the blame game starts happening, and <laughs> and then and then God does ultimately have a punishment for them, but He engages a conversation with them and tries to make sure everyone's understanding on the same page. Um, and you could say He was gracious in that. He could have said, "You know what? I'm done with Adam and Eve, and I'm just going to start over with with a new couple." new set a couple but uh but no he was gracious enough to let him live and and uh and uh provide a way to continue a relation relationship with them um, um sean go ahead and read point b there to hear our prayer so that we can approach him in confidence. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing. Um, like Matthew 21, 22 says, whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you, ha if you have faith. A lot of people read that verse and say, well, then that means I get to ask for whatever I want um, if, if I have faith. Um, but everything still needs to be done in, in God's will. Everything still needs to be done according to his plan. So if it's not his plan for you to, to have a, a billion dollar home, then he's not going to answer that, that prayer. But we, we should go ahead and ask for the, the things that we do need and, and uh, especially the things we need to, to, help, uh, um, to help our neighbors. And, and uh, you could even say do ministry. Um, do, uh, I know one pastor who prayed for a boat and uh, he actually ended up getting it. Some some guy he only met once ended up don donating a boat to him. Uh, uh, I think part of it because he said he was just commenting on how much he liked the boat, and I guess he must have been the only person that commented on the, <laughs> on the boat and his family, or at least the only pastor he he really liked. So <laughs> he ended up getting a pontoon boat, and 
and uh, uh, and he he's been doing ministry on it. He's been taking his his uh, parishioners out on the water and and uh, and uh, just getting to know them more and, and build up a relationship with them uh, just outside of, of Sunday worship. So uh, so who knows? Pray big, pray boldly, and um, and and feel free to ask. Um, uh, the next question on the top of the next page. Uh, let's go back to Casey. Um, go ahead and read the, those first three lines there. What kind of prayer do we find in the Bible? Prayers in the Bible take the form of a confession in which we acknowledge our sins to God, such as Psalm 51. Mm -hmm. No, Psalm 51 is an excellent example of confession. Um, not only in the Psalms, but uh, also throughout the entire um, the entire Bible. A lot of times when I'm uh, writing my own prayers of confession for a Sunday morning or any any type of worship service, especially midweek services, I like to do that a little bit more. Um, I often refer to that one as, as guidelines to uh, on on how to approach on. on uh, an excellent prayer. Um, and if you notice the rest of these points here, they all mention the psalm. Um, psalms is known as God's hymn book, where, where God has a bunch of songs, where people sing praises to God. But it's also known as a, as a prayer book as well. And so, uh, some, and you can see it in some of them, the way they're dressed. If you remember way back at the beginning when we went through the Bible, we got to the Psalms and talked about uh, the different types of Psalms. Um, and so here, here we are at prayer, uh, bringing up the Psalms again uh, in ways that, that it gives us examples on, on what on, on how to pray and what we can pray for. Uh, maybe some of the things we pray for today might be a little different um, as our needs and way of life is different. But hopefully over time, you can kind of get the pattern of, of the things you can pray for. Uh, Alexis, go ahead and read the next point. Request in which we seek God's help, such as Psalm 22. Mm -hmm. I think this one's probably most common as what, what we said what was what was said uh, we can ask God for help and for the things we need um, Sean go ahead and read the next one intercession in which we pray for others such as Psalm 82 mm -hmm. and so what does intercession mean well it says it says following it when we pray for others so um, when we're praying for a neighbor, when they need help, or someone comes to you and says, can you pray with me? Or, or, or can you pray for me? That, that would be even more so. Uh, that'd be an intercession. When, when I go and, and uh, do the prayers for the day on Sunday mornings, um, that's me uh, interceding uh, for the church. That's me praying for the church or, or other prayer requests of, of families, members, or friends that uh, people are, are wanting help for. It, it's another type of prayer. Um, uh, Casey, we got we got the next one. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Yeah. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving in which we express our gratitude to God for his gifts such as Psalm 118. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I try to have the Thanksgiving service uh, set up for uh, to teach us how to uh, give thanks for uh, the, uh, the things that we have. And while this might sound simple, it, it is interesting uh, when you compare the prayers of thanks to the uh, point B, prayers of request, um, when, when you're thinking of requests, I'm 
trying to think if, if you guys have an example. The only thing I can think of is during Christmas time. During Christmas time, you kind of start to think about the things that you don't have. And um, sometimes you wish you had more or, or even all the different kinds of things. Um, but um, when, when we talk about Thanksgiving, we tend to be more satisfied with, with the things we have. Um, so Thanksgiving, gratitude, they're pretty much one of the same things. When we talk about the blessings of what we have, uh, we realize maybe we're not. We're not, uh, not deprived, as deprived as we might think we are. Because uh, when I think of all the things we need or might need, um, I think when you get older, this will especially come true when it comes to bills. <laughs> you can you could start to get depressed and be like, Lord, give me more money. <laughs> but then when you think about all the things we have and, and how you can be just uh, a good steward or, or just work the best yeah. with what money you've already been given through the work, then you start to realize, you know what? Life ain't so bad if we could just make things work with what we're given. Again, we're not living in that billion dollar house that would be super nice that we could have as many um, people as we want to, to clean it up for us. But still, we have our own house, at least a roof over our head. And, and, uh, and uh, I, I, you know, I think I can manage all the things that, that God has, has given me. And sometimes life does get overwhelming. Uh, but when you, when you when you have a heart of gratitude, when you have a heart of thanks, you, you tend to be more at peace. Where if you're always asking and requesting, you tend to be more anxious. And I could I'd imagine you might think of some kids in school that may or may not, that might be that way. I don't know if you know any, anyone at school that, that it tends to live in plenty. Like it seems like the parents just buy them whatever they want and they're, they're always searching for money more well um i don't know if you're not around them then you're not hearing about it <laughs> i just know in classroom some people kind of talk about it does this ring true at all or a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe not so much but uh but yeah it's interesting so uh, what, speaking of interesting points, we got this next one here, uh, Alexis, it's it, where it says E, uh, lamentation. Oh, um, lamentation are complaint in which we express our sorrows in God, to God, such as Psalm 10. Mm-hmm. And so why, why they put lamentation or complaint? Uh, lament is, is, I guess, the Christian word for, for grieving and, and being upset. Uh, but it's also, you could use also the word complaint. And sometimes you can just, you know, honestly complain, you know what, it's too cold in here and I need the heat. <laughs> you know, but sometimes, you, a lot of times when people think of complaint, they tend to think of more picky, like, Lord, I really wasn't interested in, in broccoli today. I really wish I had carrots. You know, it's like, well, we're being picky here, aren't we? <laughs> so, um, but, but, you know, like, like I was saying, sometimes life can get tough. And I when, when you read Psalm 10, you, you'll find an example of, of a tough, uh, someone going through a tough time and, I don't know. The news keeps talking about, are we going to World War III in the summer? I really don't know. I hope not. But all I'll say is America didn't start it, as far as I know. But, <laughs> so I can't control what other people are doing. <laughs> so uh, we, we can pray for peace. That's another thing we can pray for. Um, yeah. So I guess that would probably be more in request on, on this one here. So uh, Sean, go ahead and do that last point there. Praise or adoration? Adoration. 
court letters, yeah. in which we extol God's wonderful deeds and qualities such as Psalm 136. Mm -hmm. And so when we just, uh, in many ways, this is also kind of a, a thanks, uh, but more just uh, giving God the glory, giving giving him the praise, the adoration, or, or when you could kind of think if you adore someone, usually that means you're, you're more fond of someone, but, but usually adoration, it, it, I just go back to the word praise. Um, like when, when I was talking about the praise band, um, you know, usually that, that the songs of praise help people um, help uh, put the words in, in people's hearts of, of just how great God is um, and, and the great things that he has done for us. Um, uh, truth be told, we probably don't see that just not only uh, talking to God, but just talking to others. Um, you pr probably don't hear too much praise. Maybe you hear a lot of praise from those straight A students and from the teachers saying, good job from answering the questions correctly or, or, uh, but you probably, or you might get a, a sticker or something, probably more for, for little kids, uh, for a, doing a good job. Um, so maybe sometimes you might get a re reward, a $10 to go to Starbucks or something. Um, but um, and unfortunately, I think a really good sincere praise is when you actually acknowledge someone's qualities something that's great about someone so like if you're a good reader they could say alexis that was great reading or if um or if uh, uh sean did a chore really quickly you could say sean you did the, you're very good at doing that chore whatever it is um <laughs> it, it is interesting though some people just easily take on something and it's easy for them to do um and others, they look at it and <laughs> wish they never got involved in, in whatever, <laughs> whatever it is, you know, fixing up something or um, get into some subject. I know some subjects in school, I'm sure you are easier at doing than others. Um, but, uh, but I know the opposite of praise would be tearing someone down. So, um, That'd be like name calling and, and so on and so forth. Um, and I'm sure you heard a whole lot of that, how someone's better than someone else um, by, by them own speaking. Um, so, and sometimes people tear others down just to build themselves up, unfortunately, as if um, there's no room for everyone to, 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 to give praise for what everyone has done well. Because um, even average people do things well uh, in school. Um, and a lot of times the important thing is just completing the job. And so if you're more of an average person in school, it's like, well, you can get, receive praise for sticking to uh, the task that you've been given, um, even though you may have not enjoyed it or wanted to go through it. Um, what time we got here? Uh, let's go ahead and go to the next question. What, am I not flipping through the slides? Maybe that's why people are confused. <laughs> so you got one short question here. Um, who is next? Is it, or we went all the way around. So Casey. What do all these forms of prayer have in common? In each case, prayer acknowledges that we receive life and all good gifts from God. Mm -hmm. And that's an interesting thing to think about all things we receive from God. And, and so while we may feel like we, you know, we have food or we have technology or, or we have education, you know, we can ask for help with education. Um, all things that are given to us ultimately belong to God. And so, um, so hopefully with all our prayers, we're also saying them all in things. Um, I guess if, if we're complaining, then we say, Lord, all things come from you. So I need you help to get me through my, my trouble situation. Um, can you, Maybe that's a good question. Can you guys think of some troubled, other struggling situations um, people might have that they might ask God for help with? Um, 
I'm seeing some gears turning. <laughs> yeah, sick. That's of course. Um, of course, one. What's another one? Um, person who just passed. Oh my God, it's showing. Okay, someone who is homeless. Yeah, someone who's homeless. Um, uh, and a lot of times that would that probably be that'd be an example of an inner intercession uh, yeah. prayer where you're asking the, uh, God to help others, uh, the homeless, and um, hopefully you can find out just what the need is of someone who's homeless. Um, when I, when I'm learning with the homeless, is every each, each homeless person has their own reason and, and story and, and how they got there, um, and so um, I know while. I know both towns kind of have a homeless issue. Um, truth be told, what, what I've come to discover, at least most of the times, is the, the people, the homeless in both towns, for the most part, choose to be homeless. Um, although they may not acknowledge that, <laughs> you know, they may blame others. You know, if you if they're busy blaming. I don't want to, if they if want to be, be busy blaming that they don't have a job and they say, well, why don't you hire here? And they say, well, they don't pay enough. And they say, well, why don't you work here? And well, I can't use a computer. And it's like, well, you seem like you're really quickly just coming up with excuses not to work rather than saying, you know what, I'm willing to learn. Uh, yeah. I, can you point me to someone where I could uh, help them be, be in a better place? And so, um, so sometimes while the homeless may need a home, we also hope, may hope that they need a heart of um, a heart of, of willing to learn. And maybe even behind that, they've had a lot of people take advantage of them. And, and so maybe they just need a good friend to help them um, uh, be at community. Uh, with others because I, again I can't imagine of people not having family or friends to um, get to where they're at so I know that was a long answer to your <laughs> to your uh, answer but um, thank you for that can I get another one oh, what would be another um, What would be a, a something difficult people would go through that people might want prayer for? Truth be told, you can even pray for homework. <laughs> or I don't know. I guess that's not really sorrowful, but um Maybe they just had a tough day at school. Like when I, when I, was, I was just talking about friends and, and being tough, maybe for whatever reason, uh, friends turned on each other that day. And, or, or maybe they're having a, I know you're all with your parents. <laughs> Can't really use this one. Or maybe you could if you're bold enough. But you could say, oh, Lord, help me get along with my parents. Um, I'm having a tough time being at home. So, um, so. So we'll go ahead and put friends. Um, so good friends. That's another thing we, we could pray for. Um, quickly going over the rest. Rest. I think we got like a couple more pages here. Uh, the next one. So it pretty much talks about God does hear our prayers and, and God does answer them. So that was the next one. Uh, does God answer our prayer? So yes, it may not be in, I like how it says, um, it may be in his own way, in his own time. So it may not have been the answer we were expecting, um, but still he, he gave us an answer. Um, so maybe a career, Lord, help, help me get through this career. And, and um, as, you, as you're trying to get a degree and you can't seem to finish that degree because things keep coming up, well, maybe God has a different plan for you. Or maybe it's just not the right time yet uh, for you to have that job. Maybe it's time for you to do something different for the time being. 
Um, the next question, for whom should we pray? We should pray for ourselves and for all other people. And, and I like that one, even for our enemies. Do you think you could be, I guess it's, a, it's an honest question. Do you think you could be mad at your enemies if you're praying for them? Yeah. Yeah, you would think so. It, it's interesting. In theory, it sounds possible. Someone gave you a grudge. I mean, someone wronged you for some reason or has given you a hard time, but yet you're praying for them. Um, what's interesting is what often happens is actually you tend to not be mad at them. In some ways, it's almost like you're giving your anger to the Lord. Like, Lord, you deal with this person. Um, even though you may pray, Lord, give me a, um, you know, get me ask for a, a peace and through whatever hardship you're going through or, or, or endurance, knowing that it's probably not going to end tomorrow. Um, what, what often happens is when you say, Lord, just, I don't know, I'm dealing with this struggling of, I don't know, a bully in school. Let's just pick that one. I'm struggling with this bully in school for, for whatever reason. They just won't let me get off my case. Um, sometimes God does answer that prayer and the bully finds goes on his own some other way, or maybe you have something completely opposite where the bully all of a sudden becomes your friend because he's off his high horse and is actually able to engage a conversation with you and realize you're not that different from each other. Um, and that you learn that you can't appreciate each other instead of be at each other. Um, so, um, but again, a lot of times what seems to happen when people do pray for their enemies is that uh, whatever is weighing down on their heart is, is given to the Lord and the people tend to be more at peace. And usually the, um, the relationship that's struggling tends to um, be better after the prayer, for lack of a better word. Uh, and then the next question is, where should we pray? Um, we could pray anywhere. Do we have time? Yeah, Let, let's do Acts. Uh, let's flip to Acts 12. I, I placed this in the wrong spot. But Acts chapter 12. Here we go. I don't know what to do about these tables. They don't seem that shaky when I'm When I'm at them, when I'm eating off of them. So that'll be on page 1858. So there, there is kind of three sections here. Um, Casey, let's go ahead and read that first paragraph. I guess, yeah, I selected three, three paragraphs, even though there's four here. Um, so Casey, go and read up from verses one through five of chapter 12 of the book of Acts. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword, and when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. This was during the days of the un unleavened, of unleavened. unleavened bread, and when he had seized him, he put him in prison, delivering him over to four squad squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. So there's that word again, earnest prayer. Before in, in the small catechism, we, we talked about earnest prayer where, where God uh, genuinely is, con is, is truly concerned about us. But here we have um, the church, the people of the church uh, being truly concerned about uh, Peter. 
And uh, if you can't imagine, if you think you're going through a hard time, here's a verse to remember, you know what? Life may not be that bad. <laughs> um, uh, when the first when the Christian church first started, there was resistance from all, all kinds of areas. There was resistance from the Jews. There was, re at least the Jews that didn't believe in Jesus. And, and there was the resistance from, from even the, the governing people. Um, and all this was tense was actually happening during um, Jewish celebrations, unleavened bread and, and Passover. Um, the Jews always have a celebration. It seems like every month they've got a celebration. So, <laughs> so it sounds like here that they probably was planning to keep them in for a month. Um, but uh, un unfortunately, uh, James, the brother of John, has died in this case. And so be because he was a Christian. So uh, you, you could say he was a martyr. Um, so, so now, uh, Peter's in prison, and uh, the church is praying for him. So, Alexis, go ahead and take the next paragraph. Now, when Herod was about to bring him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood next to him, and the light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up, saying, Get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, Dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to, and he said to him, Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He did not know that that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. Uh, and go ahead, keep going. Uh, two more verses. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened for them of its own accord, and they went out in went along one street and immediately the angel left him when peter came to himself he said now i am sure that the lord has set his angel and rescued me from the hand of herod and from all that the jewish people were expecting all right and so um you any of you guys can you tell me what happened in that in your own words, what happened in that paragraph? Okay. An angel rescued uh -huh. Peter with the power. Yeah, so we got an angel rescued Peter. And, and how did that how did that work out? He helped to escape by them. No. He could speak up. Well, yeah, I, I have a, I'm having a hard time hearing you on this end. I feel free to speak up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, We're all learning together. It went well. Yeah, it went well, definitely. Uh, what what did the soldiers? Um, I'm trying to find the verse. Uh, what happened to the soldiers? So it's interesting, uh, and it might be a little confusing, which is where I'm, I'm having us go through here. So we see that there's, Peter looks like he can't get out because there's, there's soldiers at the door and there's two chains, but then um, but then the, the angel got rid of the chains and was able to make a way so that the soldiers, uh, he could just bypass them. So they didn't even stop. Um, it's interesting. There's there's a, there's a few examples of this in the book of Acts. So I'm trying to make sure I'm not getting my facts confused. Um, what's the interesting thing is um, I'm trying to figure out all the he's. If if I'm not mistaken, uh, Peter. Okay, went out, followed the angel. So the angel made a way so that the 
soldiers so that he could bypass the soldiers. Um, and it looks like Peter thought he was seeing a vision, like he was having a dream. And then, uh, and then they just walked out as if <laughs> it, it was supposed to be normal. So for whatever reason, the soldiers just weren't, were, I guess, were blind to it all. And, uh, and so um, Peter got out before Herod uh, was going to, um, before Herod was, was going to deal with Peter with whatever he was going to do. And so um, this next section here is, is interesting how the people react to what, what happened with Peter. Uh, so Sean, go ahead and read the next paragraph. When he realized this, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose other name was Mark, where many were gathered together and their friends. And when he knocked at the door of the gateway, a servant girl named Rhoda came to and answer. Answer, recognizing Peter's voice. In her joy, she did not open the gate, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing at the gate. They said to her, you are out of your mind. But he kept insisting that it was so, and they kept saying it. It is his angel, but Peter continued knocking, and when they opened, they saw him and were amazed. But motioning to them with his hand to be silent, he described to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison, and he said, Tell me things to James and to the blood. Then he departed and went to another place. All right. So, in your own words, what happened there? Yeah, one more time. Um, he went to go visit the mother of John. Yeah, so he goes, he goes to make a visit. Um, and and how did how did the people respond to his visit? They don't think he's real. Yeah. They didn't. They don't think he's real. They think it's his this is his angel. Yeah, his angel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the Greek. I think the Hebrew. I mean, the Greek word there is messenger. So it's you know, was it an, another angel? Was it messenger? Um, why would Luke use the same word and? In two different instances so it's interesting why do they think it's his angel instead of peter but i i just find it interesting we got the church is praying for his release and he's knocking on the door and they're like no he's they're like no god hasn't answered our prayer yet he's he's still he's still in prison maybe it's probably his angel and peter's just standing there knocking away <laughs> um you know, I just find it the whole thing fascinating. Like, come let me in. <laughs> um, and they're just in awe of how it is. Like it says, they opened and they were amazed. You know, God does answer prayer. You know, even these people in the Christian church who have seen all these amazing things that Jesus has done. And you know, uh, I'm sure they probably prayed for other things and didn't get an answer. Um but here, there they got an answer that, of Peter being released. Um, and so it, it's just interesting. You never know what prayer can do. I, I, I like this am, I like this example because uh, it's uh, somewhat of a basic prayer in, in terms of, you know, we can pray for that if someone is in a troubled situation that they, they do get out of it. Um, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, but just, just how even people, when they do pray for that, how they may not expect, how they may not actually believe that God has actually answered their prayer. Um, and just the way they wanted to, you know, they wanted Peter to be released. <laughs> um, it wasn't, well, Jesus 
it wasn't well peter you know was released at a later time got even answered sooner than they were expecting so um i just find that fascinating another one i'll just go over real quickly here is uh, uh even though this prayer is directly to jesus and of course we can pray to jesus uh, because he is god um you have two thieves on the cross and and uh And, and the two thieves are, because if you can remember, a lot of times you'll see a picture of, of even a, a third cross. So here, uh, right here. So you got Jesus in the middle and you got your two thieves on, on the side. And then so a uh, one thief mocks him and says, you know, if you are the son of God, get down from that cross. Because, you know, what king wants to die is, is the rationale behind that. But um that the thief, on the other hand, says, you know what? This guy doesn't belong here. He's done nothing wrong. Um, and he actually ends up saying, Lord, uh, when you get into your kingdom, take me with you. Or as, or as what's actually written, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And so in other words, he knew Jesus was going to go to heaven, Um uh, and so he's like, and I know you're going to a really good place. So Lord, I want to go with you. And what did Jesus, what do you think Jesus said? That he was welcome to go. Yeah, that he was welcome to go. Even though he was paying his punishment of, of actually being um, a criminal, um, you, you, you could argue that in his prayer, he was confessing his his that he has done no wrong. Like, like the man said, look, Jesus has done no wrong. We deserve to be punished, but Lord, I want to go with you. And so uh, really through that, he was saying, you are forgiven. You can come with me, um, which is quite an interesting thing. Jesus actually said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And so um, it's just interesting to hear those, those last words before um, someone dies after knowing he's, He's had a tough life um, and not have made the best decisions. Uh, still, God welcomes him. And so um, it's, it's one of the best prayers that tends to come around along, around a, a Holy Week, around Easter time. Uh, I think it's one that kind of you tend to treasure in your heart as you, as you get older. So um, with that, what... Let's go ahead and review. Let's see if I can get that going here. I know we are kind of all over the place today, but truth be told, it's that we're pretty much looking for the same answers from uh, from uh, well. Okay, well, well. Hmm. <laughs> connected to the wrong wrong device here so we'll just share my screen this one all right you can see it now so what with the large prayer i guess the question is what is prayer? So when you think of prayer, what is it? Especially for Christians. Speaking to God. Yeah, speaking to God. Um, and... You know what, the next section probably would be those points of what kinds of prayer do we find in the Bible? Um, and that'd probably be good enough for today. So that's question 233. Um, so what kind of prayers? I'm, I'm asking an obvious question, but I know this is an obvious lesson too. <laughs> Yeah, so we got confession. 
So when we're telling God, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong, will you forgive me? And, and many times through that prayer alone, you can know you are forgiven. We'll talk more about that at, uh, uh, in March. Uh, what else? Maybe confession, I should probably put forgiveness. Request. Yeah, so request um, to seek God's help. What else? Intercession. Yeah, the next one is intercession to uh, uh, to pray. Others, what else? Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving prayer, that's pretty straightforward. What? Yeah, lament prayer. Um, Lamentation. Um, I'm trying to think of a word. I'm thinking that probably express our sorrows is probably a, a word you can uh, remember. Maybe I'll put a, a lamentation afterwards. Express. I missed a P there. Praise or adore. Yeah, I'm praising adoration. I think that was the last one. Yeah. Adoration. All right. And again, I think we missed, we skipped the question. How often can we go to the Lord in prayer? What, maybe that's, maybe that should be our last point. If, if I'm thinking about it. <laughs> so. So when can we pray? Anytime. When and where can we pray? Anywhere. Yeah. Wherever. And as other people or even family. And whenever. And again, this is just a list of things. Um, we did talk about prayer for the sick. That's oftentimes what most people tend to pray for nowadays because we're just so blessed. We feel like if we asked for a bigger house, we'd probably be <laughs> being us being a little bit uh, ambitious. But um, but again, you, I I encourage you to pray big uh, for for whatever reason. Oh. Um. um and, and I think especially relationships. Um, there is the movie, The War Room, and it's about uh, a married couple who are, are struggling in a relationship. And it is somewhat for a mature audience, but um, again, it's by PureFlix. So it's not, it's, it's meant for Christians. Um, and, and it's meant to, uh, uh, if you're going through trouble, you, especially a conflict in a relationship, go ahead and just bring it to the Lord and, and keep on praying and um and asking God, God to uh, do things. Because a lot of times when people try to solve everything themselves, um, they'll find that they just can't do it. And so uh, we should try. But um, again, hopefully, hopefully when you find that you're at a point where you're, you got more than you can handle, that you just, you just give it to the Lord. Um, and any random facts for today? Looks like we got Alexis here wanting to give one here. Okay, so dogs can sniff out diseases. Okay, we'll go with that one. <clears throat> Apparently, they can sniff out criminals too. That was the <laughs> that was the 
the news for Reading, I think, today. <laughs> About the, the getaway person and ended up not getting away. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Probably especially bloodhounds and sniff out diseases. I, I'm not a here we go. Not these diseases spell right. Um, let me stop sharing this. And uh, so, any any th for a prayer I got for the homeless, good friends, and the sick. Anything else we we should pray for? The country. <laughs> yeah, country. Press any any particular actually. area? I know you probably could think of oodles. But, they didn't say the whole world. Yeah. 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 The whole world has gone crazy. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh and uh and then we'll be done. Heavenly Father, um, we do thank you uh for this gathering and and uh I was thinking I was able to spend a little bit more time um uh, with the people getting to, to know where they're all at and and uh and help them guide them to where we're all going but lord um today we want to especially left up to you the sick as uh, uh there's uh people in each congregation who are sick and some family members as well um but uh lord especially the people in town uh we, we pray that you do put your healing hand on them and that they become well and lord we also pray for the homeless um uh, that wherever they're at they're all in their own situation situation but lord we, we do pray that um they do find a place to call home and and uh, a place to live in, in good health and, and um a place where they're um i guess you could say uh, not in the way or or where they can uh, just have their own place to live um, that's uh, that's a uh, that's uh, designed for them and lord uh, we also pray for good friends that uh the people you've placed in our lives, whether um, uh, they're good or bad. Lord, we, we pray for our good relationships amongst all of them. And, and even if there's any new people that come across their way, uh, Lord, help us to be able to build a strong uh, friendship with them. Um, Lord, we, we also pray for a country in our world. Um, we kind of wonder what people are doing out there and what they're thinking. And um, we, we also wonder how much of it is behind corruption and, and just selfishness and ambition. And Lord, um, uh, we know um, those things are, are not from you. And so, Lord, we pray that um, you do put, um, that you, you do transform the hearts of, the, especially the leaders in our world, um, to, to um, have a heart that, uh, that you've designed for them to have, a godly heart, um, so that they may... Uh, make decisions that are not only good for them, uh, but also the good for the people of all the world uh, so that they too may be able to live in good health and we, we may be able to be uh, good stewards of the world we're given in. Uh, but Lord, um, um, we, we just thank you that um, you have given us the good news of Jesus and we, and we pray that this good news continues to spread uh, despite whatever uh, situations um, that, that come our way in the future. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Again, uh, I know today was a little longer, but also got started a little later too. So um, uh, God's blessings to you all and, and uh, have a good night. Have a good night, Pastor. Good night.